Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the ASMR Cook. Today we're going to be making Moroccan carrot salad with oranges and medjool dates. This is from Food and Wine. We're going to use lemons, oranges, although I'm actually using clementines here, honey, carrots, dates. You can't see, but I pointed to cumin, cayenne pepper, cinnamon olive oil. The first thing we're going to do is grind up some cumin seeds. We're going to use one quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. Stereo mic is not great, so hopefully that sounded okay. grinder. Sometimes people even just put spices in a little baggie and smash it with a hammer on the bottom of the can. Put that aside for later. Next thing, we're going to zest one lemon. zester tool here. I think it makes a really great sound, but you can just use a regular grater and grate off the top layer where you can use a microplane. The biggest thing about zesting something is that you don't want to get into the white pith. The pith is a bitter part of the skin underneath the top zest, which has all the good essential oils and good flavors. that lemon. Having a little juicer like this actually really helps you get all the pulp sacks burst and get all of the juice rather than trying to just squeeze it with your hand. And this one's nice because it catches the seeds and doesn't let them to get into the juice as long as they're not too small. Sometimes really small ones get through there. use something that uh, zests in kind of large pieces. I like to chop it up so it's little little pieces of zest. Although you can try different different ways. Uh, sometimes the big pieces of zest add a texture element that's nice and sometimes it doesn't. So you can try both ways and see how you like it. So that zest is going to go in with the juice. Next 
next we're going to zest. The recipe calls for one orange. Uh, I've got a couple clementines. I think I might only zest one here. There's so much orange in the recipe that the extra zest isn't always necessary. You're just going to follow the contour of the orange and, or clementine or whatever orange colored citrus you happen to have and just with the as with the lemon you don't want to get into the bitter pith you only want the outer zest and we're going to juice this as well goes in with the lemon juice and lemon zest. We will chop up the orange zest into little pieces. goes in with the other zest and the other juice. Into that we're going to add one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon ground, one quarter teaspoon of ground cumin, and one quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now the cayenne pepper adds just a little bit of heat and spiciness. We're also going to add two tablespoons of honey. That spiciness really balances out the sweetness of this dish. There's a lot of citrus juice, there's a lot of the dates and the honey add a ton of sweetness to this dish. And the heat, just, just a tiny bit, uh, really gives you a nice balance in the flavors. I've tried this without the cayenne pepper, and it, it just wasn't as good. I really enjoy it with the cayenne pepper, so I recommend that you add it. That quarter teaspoon is enough just to give the whole dish just a little bit of heat. Finally, we're going to drizzle in about a quarter cup of olive oil. You can whisk it, you can mix it, it's all gonna get mixed up later anyway. Some salt, just about a big pinch, maybe a teaspoon. You can always add salt, you can't take out salt, so I recommend you start with a little bit less than what you expect you're gonna need and taste later and add some more if you need it. Next thing we're going to do is peel all of our carrots. I always trim the ends off. You know, you can actually save all of your trimmings, all of your peelings, and put them in a bag and keep them in the freezer. And then sometime when you want to make some vegetable stuff, you just toss all of your collected odds and ends into a big pot of boiling water, boil it for a while, add some salt and pepper, and you have vegetable stock. something that you can do. Some people swear on a Y peeler. Some people swear on a straight peeler. I think either works. I prefer a straight peeler with a movable blade. Uh, that's just how I grew up peeling things and it feels a little more natural to me, but I know that certain things um, like large pieces of squash, sometimes it's easier to get an angle with a Y peeler, which is where the blade is aligned perpendicular to the handle. As long as the blade itself is on a pivot, uh, I don't really think it matters all that much. The ones that have a fixed blade, 
that are straight, those can be a little bit tricky because you have to have your hand angled just so to make sure that it works right. And that's always kind of annoying. Again, these are peelings that you could save if you want. They can go into a vegetable stock. The first time that I made this dish, I actually peeled the outer peel off and threw that away. And then I just peeled the carrots over and over and over again until there was basically nothing left. So I made just little strips of fresh carrot. And I used that. And that was really good the first night. However, uh, over a couple days, that started to get sort of mushy because the pieces were so thin and they absorbed all the juices and it was kind of mushy. So I'd recommend that if you're going to serve this the night of, you might want to consider just peeling and peeling and peeling and making little um, ribbons of carrot uh, as the carrot in this dish. However, if you're going to be making this ahead of time or you're going to have leftovers and save it for a few days, I do recommend that you chop them up the way that I do it in a few minutes. You guys can comment and let me know. I just basically, for my ASMR version of this video, I'm just letting the video run and not really editing it at all. If you don't want to watch me clean off the workspace or step out of the frame or anything like that, uh, I can start editing that kind of stuff out. Otherwise, I'm just going to take the raw video and raw sound uh, and just do the explanation and have it like that. So please let me know what I can do to improve this. Uh, I appreciate it. I got a comment on the last one about uh, the sound balance. So I'm trying to make sure that the sound from the video and the sound from my voice is pretty well balanced. The software that I use uh, has auto ducking. So uh, the sound from the video automatically goes down a little bit when I speak. There's not much I can do about that right now. I'm trying to learn to use some other editing software that might be able to help. The recipe says to use matchstick cut. You can just kind of cut into small pieces, but as I said, you want them to be a little bit thick so that you retain that crunch. I'd love some feedback on is about how much to talk and how much just to let the chopping sounds come through. I know it's kind of a personal preference for a lot of people. There are some song, some videos with no sounds and just voice, some videos with just voice and no sound, some with combination. So let me know which you like more and I'll make sure to balance it one way or the other.
I just said was a trick that I recommend that you do if you're cooking. If you've got something big and round to cut, cut off a little bottom to give yourself a flat surface. And that way it won't roll around when you're trying to cut it. doing here. Walking around to get some other container or something. Ah yes, the cutting board was moving around and one way to stop a cutting board from moving around is to put a damp washcloth kitchen towel underneath it. It stops it from scooting around all over the place. Really, I should have done that at the very beginning, but I didn't think it was going to bother me that much. The recipe calls for about one pound of carrots cut into three inch matchsticks. I think I had a two pound bag and I took about half of them out. I wouldn't worry about exactly how much. So you're going to take your carrots and your dressing, combine them. But you're going to leave, oh, about two tablespoons. Just a little bit extra. We're going to leave a little bit extra in the bowl. for about 40 minutes.
now we're going to make sort of a topping. You're going to use four navel oranges. As I said, I just have a clementine, so that's what I'm using. Make sure you get all the bitter pith off. And what you can do is, if you want, and you'll see I do something kind of like this, is it tells you in the recipe to cut between the membranes releasing the orange sections. So what you can do is if you have a whole big orange, cut rather than cutting, taking the sections apart normally, you actually cut in between each of the sections. And that exposes the little pulpy juice sacs rather than the outsides having the membrane in between the sections. So that way when you bite into it, you're not biting through the section, you actually bite right into the juice sacs. You wouldn't think that it makes that much of a difference, but I do really think that the mouthfeel and the flavor is improved by doing this. sounds, but just watching this as I'm recording the narration, my mouth's getting all watery. It was quite delicious. Next, you're going to take half a pound of medjool dates. So there's lots of different kinds of dates. Medjool, I believe, are uh, in the category called semi-dry. There are some dates that are very moist and kind of wet feeling. Uh, I believe delicate nor might be in that category. Um, but medjool are these larger ones. Sometimes they're pitted, other times they're not. So make sure that if you're using ones that have pits in them, you take all the pits out. If you're very health conscious, Dates are maybe not the best snack. Just a few dates have, I think, about 100 to 200 calories in two to three dates. Uh, they're, they're very, very sweet. And they make a great sweetener and make great natural sweetener. And in fact, a lot of the times uh, in organic and natural foods, you'll find date sugar as one of the ingredients. It doesn't mean it's not sugar. Uh, it's got the same caloric impact as any other kind of sugar. Um, it may have a different impact on your uh, insulin. Um, it's like a different glycemic index, I think, because of the kind of sugar versus table sugar, but you should still watch it. You would, I would not sit down with a whole container of dates and eat a lot of them because you will find that you have consumed far more calories than you expect. You're going to slice these relatively thin. The recipe calls for lengthwise. I did it crosswise. You can do it either way.
states can all go in for the dressing. The next thing we're going to do is start cutting each of the orange sections open. You don't have to do this, but as I said, I think that it makes for a slightly different flavor mouthfeel. your knife is nice and sharp because otherwise this is going to be pretty difficult. Some people are afraid of sharp knives. They think that a sharp knife is going to cut them, but in reality you're more likely to hurt yourself using a blunt knife, a knife that's not sharp enough because you're going to have to apply a lot of pressure to try to get through things. And as you're applying pressure, you're more likely to slip and then cut yourself with a knife that's not quite sharp enough to get through what you want but plenty sharp to get through your tissue. However, you have an, if you have a nice knife, I don't recommend um, a mass market knife sharpener. You certainly can use a honing, uh, the honing stick that comes with your knife set usually, but I would not use any kind of ceramic um, knife sharpener because that it was actually removing material a lot of the time it's going to mess up your edge. What you want is to take it to somebody who knows what they're doing and they'll use a very, very fine grit sharpening block and set the bevel just right and get it very sharp for you. You want your knife to be sharp enough that, you, if you've heard the expression, let the knife do the work, you want that to be true. You want to put very little pressure on it and just slide the knife forward and have it bite in and just cut right through the thing that you're cutting. Thank <laughs> you. 
I just realized at this point that the dates and the oranges weren't all going to fit in the smaller bowl. Mix that all up. Make sure everything's nicely coated with the dressing. carrots on the plate. And then around the carrots you're going to spoon the oranges and the dates. Now it's up to you if you want to store these separately or store them together. The flavors go really nicely together but it does kind of change the flavor profile a little bit to mix it all together the carrots end up tasting a little bit like the oranges and have the sweetness of the dates kind of mixed in or you can store them separately and replate them when you're ready to serve. So that's Moroccan carrot salad with orange med jewel dates from Food and Wine. I hope you enjoyed. Please uh, like, subscribe, do all those kinds of things and I'll see you later.